today we would be learning the practical demonstration of antigen antibody interaction in gels the aim of the practical is to demonstrate antigen antibody interaction in gel introduction to in vitro antigen antibody reactions these reactions refer to the antigen antibody reactions occurring outside the host in the laboratory they help in the diagnosis of infections in epidemiological surveys in the identification of infectious agents and of non infectious antigens such as enzymes antigen antibody reactions in vitro are known as serological reactions now we will be talking about precipitation reactions the interaction between an antibody and a soluble antigen in aqueous solution forms a lattice that eventually develops a visible precipitation antibody that forms precipitation is known as precipitin this process is called as precipitation reaction formation of an antigen antibody lattice depends on the valency of both the antigen and the antibody the antibody should be bivalent the antigen must be either bivalent or polyvalent zone of equivalence is a point at which the maximum precipitation occurs this reaction is widely used in several immunological techniques precipitation occurs in both fluid and gel we will be further talking about precipitation in fluid a quantitative precipitation reaction can be performed by placing a constant amount of antibody in a series of tubes and adding increasing amounts of antigen to the tubes after the precipitate forms each tube is centrifuged to pellet the precipitate the supernatant is poured off and the amount of precipitate is measured plotting the amount of precipitate against increasing antigen concentrations yields a precipitin curve excess of either antibody or antigen interferes with maximal precipitation which occurs in the so called equivalence zone within which the ratio of antibody to antigen is optimal as a large multimolecular lattice is formed at equivalence the complex increases in size and precipitates out of the solution in precipitation reactions under conditions of antibody excess or antigen excess extensive lattices do not form and precipitation is inhibited although the quantitative precipitation reaction is seldom used experimentally today the principles of antigen excess antibody excess and equivalence apply to many antigen antibody reactions the precipitation test may be carried out either as a qualitative or as a quantitative test it is very sensitive for detecting antigens and little as 1 microgram of protein can be detected by precipitation tests it therefore finds forensic application in the identification of blood and seminal stains and in testing for food adulterants precipitants are relatively less sensitive for the detection of antibody precipitation in gel there are several advantages in allowing precipitation to occur in a gel rather than in a liquid medium the reaction is visible as a distinct band of precipitation which is stable and can be stained for preservation if necessary as each antigen antibody reaction gives rise to a line of precipitation the number of different antigens in the reacting mixture can be readily observed immunodiffusion also indicates identity cross reaction and non identity between different antigens immunodiffusion is usually performed in a soft 1% agar gel immunodiffusion is divided into two types namely 
simple immunodiffusion and electroimmunodiffusion. We will be discussing about this in detail. Agglutination reactions. The interaction between antibody and a particulate antigen results in visible clumping called agglutination. Antibodies that produce such reactions are called agglutinins. Agglutination reactions are similar in principle to precipitation reactions. They depend on the cross-linking of polyvalent antigens. Just as an excess of antibody inhibits precipitation reactions, such excess can also inhibit agglutination reactions. This inhibition is called the prozone effect. Because prozone effects can be encountered in many types of immunoassays, understanding the basis of this phenomenon is of general importance. Several mechanisms can cause the prozone effect. First, at high antibody concentrations, the number of antibody binding sites may greatly exceed the number of epitopes. As a result, most antibodies bind antigen only univalently instead of multivalently. Antibodies that bind univalently cannot cross-link one antigen to another. Prozone effects are readily diagnosed by performing the assay at a variety of antigen or antibody concentrations. As one dilutes to an optimum antibody concentration, one sees higher levels of agglutination or whatever parameter is measured in the assay being used. When one is using polyclonal antibodies, the prozone effect can also occur for another reason. The antiserum may contain high concentrations of antibodies that bind to the antigen but do not induce agglutination. These antibodies called incomplete antibodies are often of the immunoglobulin G that is IgG class. Now we will be learning the principle of simple immunodiffusion. Simple immunodiffusion refers to the diffusion of antigens and antibodies without any external forces. This technique is further divided into two types namely single immunodiffusion and double immunodiffusion. Starting with single immunodiffusion. In this type of immunodiffusion only antigen or antibody diffuses in gel. Single diffusion in one dimension. The antibody is incorporated in agar gel in a test tube and the antigen solution is layered over it. The antigen diffuses downward through the agar gel forming a line of precipitation that appears to move downwards. This is due to the precipitation formed at the advancing front of the antigen and is dissolved as the concentration of antigen at the site increases due to diffusion. The number of bands indicates the number of different antigens present. Single diffusion in two dimensions that is also known as radial immunodiffusion. Here the antiserum is incorporated in agar gel poured on a flat surface of slide or petri dish. The antigen is added to the wells cut on the surface of the gel. The antigen diffuses radially from the well and forms ring shaped bands of precipitation concentrically around the well. The diameter of the halo gives an estimate of the concentration of the antigen. This method has been employed for the estimation of the immunoglobulin classes in sera. This method is also otherwise known as Mancini method or Mancini technique. The Mancini method is routinely used to quantitate serum levels of immunoglobulin M that is IgM, immunoglobulin G that is IgG and immunoglobulin A that is IgA by incorporating class specific anti-isotype antibody into the agar. 
The technique is also applied to determine the concentrations of complement components in the serum. The Mancini method cannot detect antigens present in concentrations below 5 to 10 microgram per milliliter. This moderate sensitivity is the major limitation of the radial immunodiffusion method. This method is used to determine alpha fetoprotein occurring in certain liver tumors. Now, we will be studying double immunodiffusion. In double immunodiffusion, double refers to the diffusion of both the antigens and the antibodies. Under this heading, simple double immunodiffusion, octolony procedure and immunoelectrophoresis are studied. Starting with simple double immunodiffusion, it is double immunodiffusion in one dimension. Here, the antibody is incorporated in gel above which is placed a column of plain agar. The antigen is layered on top of this. The antigen and antibody move towards each other through the intervening column of plain agar and form a band of precipitate where they meet at optimum proportion. This technique is usually used to identify the presence of either antigen or antibody. Second is the octolony procedure. It is double diffusion in two dimensions. This is the immunodiffusion method most widely employed and it helps to compare different antigens and antisera directly. Agar gel is poured on a slide and wells are cut using a template. The antiserum is placed in the central well and different antigens in the surrounding wells. If two adjacent antigens are identical, the lines of precipitate formed by them will fuse and provide V-shaped curve. If they are unrelated, the lines will cross each other and provide X-shaped curve. Cross reaction or partial identity is indicated by spur formation and it provides Y-shaped curve. Following are the three identities observed while performing octolony double diffusion. Pattern of identity A. The antibodies in the antiserum react with both antigens resulting in a smooth line of precipitate. The antibodies cannot distinguish between the two antigens that is the two antigens are immunologically identical. Pattern of partial identity B. In the pattern of partial identity, the antibodies in the antiserum react more with one of the antigens than the other. The spur is thought to result from the determinant present in one antigen but lacking in the other antigen. Last is the pattern of non-identity C. In the pattern of non-identity, None of the antibodies in the antiserum react with the antigenic determinants that may be present in both the antigens. That is, the two antigens are immunologically unrelated as far as their antiserum is concerned. Materials required to perform the practical 1.2% agarose gel, sample antigens and antiserum, glass slide and cup borer. Now we will look into methodology. Step 1. Wash the glass slide properly with detergent so as to make it grease free. Step 2. Prepare the agarose gel and cool the agarose solution to 55 to 60 degrees Celsius and pour 4 ml of agarose over grease free slide. Step 3. Using the cup borer, punch the wells by keeping the glass plate on the template that is showing the pattern of the wells.
Step 4. Fill the wells with 10 microliter each of the antiserum and the corresponding antigens. Step 5. Keep the glass slide in the moist chamber overnight at 37 degrees Celsius. Step 6. After incubation, observe for the opaque line of precipitation between the antigen and antiserum wells. Step 7. Report the pattern of identity of sample antigens. We would summarize the entire practical demonstration of antigen antibody interactions that we have talked so far. The interaction between antigen and antibody can be visualized in vitro on a grease free glass slide using agarose gel of proper concentration. The incubation period with moist environment is an important factor for formation of arcs or precipitins due to interaction between two proteins.